with some, someone sitting on it. And the one who, was, who sat there had the appearance of a jasper and a ru and ruby, a rainbow that shone like, like an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne became, from the throne came flashes and lightning, lightning, rumbling and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These were the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was, there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal. Now, in the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had the face of a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Before I continue, I just want to say, imagine if you're in a room all by yourself and one of these creatures shows up. That's just a thought. My <laughs> Alright, so day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him, who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him, who sits on the throne and worship Him, who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. I'm going somewhere with this. I'll Amen. Stay. Amen. And by your will, they were created and have their being. All right. So later that day, that was that was during, of course, that was during the whole the bus ride. I'm listening to this, and he's reading, and I'm looking at my Bible and following through, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So later that day, I come to Bible study class, and guess what the lecture was about? It was Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel was a prophet of Judah for more than 20 years. He saw the heavens open and visions of God. The book of Ezekiel describes his vision, his visions of God, the creature that surrounded, the creatures that surrounded God, and the throne of God. Now, the interesting, the interesting thing is to me is that a, approximately 150 years before Ezekiel. Isaiah had a similar vision. He also saw cre creatures similar to what Ezekiel saw and heard them crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And that's in Isaiah 6.3. 6, now John's vision came hundreds of years later. That's crazy. To me, I don't know. So, and I never believed, before, before four years ago, I never believed in the Bible, like, I, you know, I, I went through Catholic school, I, I went, I grew up in the Catholic Church, my parents always took us to the Catholic Church, and then I became a teenager, and it was like, kind of like, put that in the back burner type of thing, and up until four years ago, I'm mowing my lawn, I'm doing yard work and stuff like that, and, and I'm like, dad, you know, I have, I have the house, I have the wife, I have the kid, you know, what else is there, like, something was lacking. So Amen. I approach Kylie about it, and she tells me, you know, I've been thinking the same thing. Now, I, I, let me do it quick. I have, um, well, this one girl, the Maddie's, she's on the bus, and she's talking to me about, oh, you should come to my church, check it out, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, don't talk to me about church, don't talk to me about God, blah, 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 blah. And we had our arguments on the, on the bus. Um, in the meantime, Kylie had another friend on the bus, um, Dion's wife. Carla, who's like, oh, you should come to my church, because they used, used to do the ladies' yeah. night, the ladies' thing, oh, you should come to my church, and my church, and my church. So, we live, we live right there by our Sacred Heart, like, right around the corner type of thing. And, you know, we go on a Sunday, and me, I don't know how to pray, our Father, the, the, I, I have to learn, but I don't, I don't know it. So, I wasn't really feeling it, it's an English Mass. So she's like, you know, and we spoke about it. And she's like, all right, so next Saturday night, we'll go to the Spanish one. The Spanish, it was, a, I don't know if he was Indian or Mexican or, you know, no offense or nothing, but I didn't understand a word he was saying. And I know my wife wasn't going to understand it either, so. 
<laughs> that was Robert. Um, so we said, all right, so she tells me, oh, let's go try Carlos Church. We'll see what's up. And I'm like, all right, fine. It's a 20-minute drive. And I'm like, having, this, having Sacred Heart right there, like a minute away, having to come over here. So we came here to Solid Rock, and the people were amazing. They, you know, they greeted us and everything, and it was the, the sermon. Um, Oh, I forgot his name. Ooh, sorry. Well, I forgot his name. Pastor. Pastor Tom. Pastor Rick. Not Tom. Rick. 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 It was Rick. And it was an amazing sermon. I mean, Kathleen loved it. I loved it. And of course, I come to this church being Catholic. I got to go back to this. Being Catholic, I, um, and I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> like, it's okay. my own. Like, the, um, it's okay. God's putting the words into you. Thanks. I, um, you know, I have my questions, like, oh, so what, like, what's up, you know, the church and God and this, and I have all these questions. So in any case, I said, I told Kanye, we came down here to pick up Kanye, and I go, Kanye, I'll be right back, let me go upstairs and see Pastor Rick. I mean, I have, because I have questions. So I go up there, and I see, and it's uh, Pastor Rick and a couple of other people, Miriam, they're praying over this lady. This lady's bawling. She's, like, crying, and she's jumping and screaming, and they're over there, Jesus, Jesus this, Jesus that. I've never seen that in the Catholic Church. So this, I mean, gives me goosebumps. I saw this and I was amazed. And I'm like, you know what, maybe it's not the right time to go and ask questions. <laughs> so, you know, I spoke, I, I asked lots of questions. Like, Dennis, we spent eight hours in the car with that snowstorm um, in 2010. Mm -hmm. So it was Dennis, Mark, and Tony. We had, a, we had a blast and stuff like that. So I had some questions answered there. Jennifer Armstrong. So what's up with this, and what's up with the Catholic the Catholic Church? Da, 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 da. We, she answered a whole bunch of questions. So I felt at home. Even at one point in time, look, Rick, Ricky, Ricky, um, invites his wife invites us to to their house to to a party because it's Ricky's birthday. And I'm like, yo, I mean, why are they inviting us? Like we just, you know, we just got to the church. Like you don't know, the mother's like trying to like get us and stuff like that. Get us in the church. And stuff like that. And I'm like, so I go, we, we go there, you know, there's like nobody in the front, all the cars are parked and stuff. And so we walk to the back, they have like this big tent with like DJ booth and food all over the place and people from the church and not from the church. And then you have Ricky like going like this and singing and karaoke and stuff like that. We had a blast. It wasn't about religion, it was party, you know, hanging out. But um, that was my thing with Sada Rock. And we, I mean, we've been coming here ever since, and we love it, and when we don't come here, it's like something is missing on that, that Sunday or something. Like, at the end of the day, we're like, maybe we're going to stand on or something like that. In any case, um, going back to this, <laughs> going back to the boring stuff. All right, next slide, please. So, the relationship on one-on-one, again, as I was saying earlier, the relationships have that one-on-one, the moments, and you know, the one-on-one -on -one relationship has its moment. For example, spiritual guide, where you have somebody um, prayerfully listening, listens and gives feedback, and you have the coach who's um, focused on on certain discipline or something like that. Um, you have a sponsor. Companies usually tend, tend to use sponsors where they have a person kind of like guiding them and, and advising that person. Okay, um, the book encourages us to, to build an intense relationship or a year-long relationship with at least two other people just for the purpose of growing and becoming, reproducing disciples of Jesus. All right, um, all right there's, a, there's one more thing that I, I want to speak about real quick. It's... Um, I just, let me just, I'm just going to go straight to this. Um, we're going to go to Matthew 28, 18, 18 through 20. This is when Jesus appears to the disciples after he, um, he has risen. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, one thing that I heard from one of the one of the sermons is like, you know, people say that they follow Jesus and they believe in Jesus and Jesus this and Jesus that, but they don't. Jesus said right before he ascended to go and make disciples and to get baptized. And Robin, in one of his on speech here, he he mentioned, you know, that when when Don was given out the chapters, the chapters seem to have applied to them or to to each of us, and that is the fact here with me. I I struggle with this, and I'm I'm going to say that I'm going to admit it. I do struggle with this, but lately I've had this desire to get baptized and, and like to get that feeling. And when I see it on TV or a video or something like that, I'm like, wow, that's that's cool, you know, like. I get this, this this sensation and stuff. So, and again, if you if you believe in Jesus and and you know you believe what the Bible says and stuff, then you should you should get baptized at least, and and try to make disciples as as we are called to do. Um, one other thing, last thing, conclusion. Pray, because it's our line to God type of thing. We can speak to God, the Creator of everything, and and gives us that power. Read and study the Bible for yourself so you won't have people telling you, oh, when I, when I first started and got into the church, people say, outside of the church, they would say, oh, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. And I'm like, really? You know, so, you know, read the Bible for yourself. If you hear, if you hear a sermon or something like that, go and look into it. Check it out. Because things come to you. I mean, when I was doing this, the same verse, this, this Matthew 28, kept coming back at me. So that's why I, I, you know, I put it here. And also, like I said before, get baptized, which is something that I have to do. Honestly, I have to do it. I gotta figure out when and stuff like that. And then, but one thing that, that, that bothers me or that's, that's here in the back of my mind is the fact that back in the day when John the Baptist was baptizing people, people got baptized right there and then. You know, when people converted to Christianity and stuff, it wasn't, oh, let me, you know, next Sunday or whatever, let me go do it. Or, you know. So, I have. I you, bro. No, I tell you right now. <laughs> but you have to put like a little show of a or something. Throw, 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 throw back. I do right now. It's cool with me. And um, again, go and make disciples. That's what we're called to do. We're, each one of us, and, and the Bible says, again, I'm doing what the Bible, but I. I have to see exactly where I couldn't find exactly where it says, but we are, we all have with the strength, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to to make disciples and, and have that encouragement and that thing that we need. But it gives us that. Um, one last slide. All right. Um, when I first started, again suggestions, then I be or. Read the Bible. A ready defense. A ready defense. This book was recommended to me by Pastor Tom. It because I, I like I said before, I didn't believe in the Bible. I did, it, to me, the Bible was just a book. So, and even my sister told me I had like a little thing with my sister. Because I'm like, oh, you gotta read the Bible, blah, blah, blah. And They're like, okay. Just the other day, you were saying that the Bible is just a book. So after reading this book, this um, Josh McDowell. As some of you may know, he set out to to contradict Jesus, to to make to 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 prove that Jesus was, was fake. He converted to Christianity. Amen. He became a Christian and has written books and stuff like that. And this book this book explains a whole bunch of things about the Bible from from. It's it's a lot. It's it's very informative. I recommend it. Um, Transforming discipleship and. Secrets of a Prayer Warrior, That's, that was Mike Hansen's class, really good about prayer. I really recommend it. All right? That's it. All right. Thank you, Nelson. So also, I can tell you're nervous. Every Who here, for this first time they spoke, they were nervous as all heck. You have to go change your underwear afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They only said the F-bomb twice. Really? Doing good, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, no, they're kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah.